the most massive stars in the universe. If you look up to the sky at night, you'll soon realize that we are surrounded by stars. Some of them are bright, some others are fainter. This could be because they are far away, or maybe it's just that they are intrinsically faint. The only way to understand it is by calculating their distance from us. According to the spectral classification of stars, the brightest ones are the biggest ones. Usually smaller stars are not so bright. But which stars are the most massive ones? Do we have a list of the most massive stars in the universe? Thank God the answer is yes. In this video, we'll talk about them. Spoiler, the most massive one is more than 215 times the mass of our sun. Astronomers study stars' characteristics and work to calculate their distances, their temperatures, and their masses. Why did they do so? The answer is pretty simple. They want to understand something about how they're born, live, and eventually die. Among these, maybe the death of a star is the most fascinating event that could happen because a star could go black hole, neutron star, or supernova according to mass it had when it was born. Some of the stars are only a fraction of the sun's mass, which isn't actually a big star. Others are equivalent to hundreds of suns. We said that bigger stars are usually brighter, but pay attention here because largest is not equivalent to most massive when it comes to stars. From theoretical studies and models, we see that the limit to a star's mass is about 120 solar masses. What we really mean when we say that is a star can't remain stable if it overcomes the mass limit of 120 solar masses. That's what theory says. But the reality is always more complicated than models. There are stars that are way beyond that limit. We know this because we observe them. How can they exist is a problem that astronomers are trying to solve. R136A1 For example, the star R136A1 is 215 times more massive than our Sun. The star is incredibly heavy. It currently holds the record as the most massive star ever known to exist in the universe. But this is not its only record. It is also the most luminous one at nearly 9 million times the luminosity of our Sun. Sunglasses can do nothing against this monstrous star. R163A1 is part of a so-called supercluster, that is, a messy region filled with stars. You can find it in the Tarantula Nebula, in the famous Large Magellanic Cloud, also known as LMC. Its temperature is about 46,000 Kelvin, maybe the temperature of hell. The cluster can be seen in the far southern celestial hemisphere, so I'm sorry if you are from the northern one. The distance to R136A1 cannot be determined directly, but it is assumed to be at the same distance as the Large Magellanic Cloud at around 50 kiloparsecs. WR101E Another star very massive that exceeded 150 times the mass of our Sun is WR101E. Unluckily, we know very little about this giant celestial object. We can say that it is a wolf rayet star. What? You don't know what a wolf rayet star is? So you need some quick pills of star evolution, huh? Wolf rayet stars. They are massive stars that are at an advanced stage of stellar evolution and losing mass at a very high rate. With masses typically greater than 25 times that of the Sun, they have brief lifetimes and are therefore quite rare objects. We know of about 220 in our own galaxy, but astronomers have estimated that the Milky Way may contain between 1,000 and 2,000 such objects, the majority hidden by dust. Another famous star that is one of the most massive is located in the Sagittarius constellation, and it is surrounded by the Peony Nebula. It is therefore called Peony Nebula Star. What it actually is? It is again a wolf rayet star. In particular, it is a class blue hypergiant similar to R136A1. It is 150 solar masses, and it is also a rather large star. Its radius is about 100 times that of our host star. Could you even imagine such a huge star? Because I'm finding it hard to do so. By the way, if you are curious, the constellation of Sagittarius hosts a lot of amazing astronomical objects. For example, you can easily observe M24. M24, also known as the Small Sagittarius Star Cloud, is a large naked-eye expanse of stars, clusters, 
nebulosity and other objects located in Sagittarius. It is visible to the naked eye as a large detached part of the Milky Way. The object is a fantastic sight in binoculars and small telescopes. It's claimed that M24 has the densest concentration of individual stars visible, around a thousand in a single binocular field of view. It should not be confused with the nearby large Sagittarius star cloud, which lies about 10 degrees to the south. The small Sagittarius star cloud is not a true deep sky object, but results from a rare alignment between the Earth and the center of our galaxy. We would expect this region to be packed with interstellar dust, however, by chance we are looking through a gap in the dust. As a result, many thousands of distant stars, clusters, and nebulae are visible that would otherwise be obscured. Spatially, M24 covers the volume up to 16,000 light-years deep. M24 can be found 7 degrees north and a little west of the top star of the bright teapot asterism, Caus Borealis. Position north of M24 is open cluster M18 and the Omega Nebula, M17. All three objects are visible in the same binocular field of view. Open clusters M23 and M25 are located a few degrees west and east of M24 respectively. M24 was discovered by Charles Messier on June 20, 1764. It's best seen from southern or equatorial latitudes during the months of June, July, and August. Let's go on and see some other massive stars. HD 93129A The one we want to talk about now is HD 93129A. This is a blue hypergiant. It means it's very hot and very big and it is likely one of the most massive stars in the Milky Way. It is relatively close to us compared to other stars above mentioned and is located in the NGC 3372 nebula in the constellation Carina. The mass of this star is estimated to be around 120 to 127 solar masses. Fun fact, it is part of a binary system and it's the heavier of the two because its companion is only 80 solar masses. Talking about Carina, you can add HD 93250 to the list of blue hypergiants on this list. It has a mass of about 118 times the mass of our Sun, but little else is known about this object. Pismus 24-1a and b. A star with a strange name is Pismus 24-1a. It's located in the Pismus 24 open cluster and it's a blue variable. How do you say? You don't know what a blue variable supergiant is? Here we are again with another astrophysical pill of stellar evolution. The luminous blue variables, LBVs, are a recently recognized class of massive supergiants, also called S-door variables, after their large Magellanic Cloud prototype. These are the most luminous stars in a galaxy and are easily identified in extragalactic systems. Their amplitudes range from less than one magnitude to over five. Also called Hubble Sandage Variables, they display long years time scales for their temperature and luminosity changes, often ejecting shells that form pseudo-photospheres, causing their spectral types to change from O to as late as F. The galactic supergiant P. Cygni, well known for its high rate of mass loss and irregular light variations, is a galactic member of this class. Pismus 24-1a's sister is Pismus 24-1b. As you can see, astronomers have plenty of imagination when it comes to names. This star, like its sister, is another 100-plus solar mass star in Pismus 24 region within the constellation of Scorpius. In this video, we've been talking a lot about the most massive stars. But why did we do so? Why is it important to study massive stars? Before finding out the answer to this question, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking the bell so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. The answer is pretty clear if we consider the introduction to a famous paper by Robert C. Kennicott from Stewart Observatory, Arizona. In its article on the role of massive stars in astrophysics, it is stated, over the past few decades, it has become apparent that the influence of massive stars extends well beyond the confines of their immediate stellar systems. The radiation output from massive stars ionizes their interstellar surroundings, 
and probably have a profound influence on the subsequent formation of stars and their environments. Massive stars also play a profound role as the source population for neutron stars, black holes, and the diverse set of high-energy phenomena and processes associated with those objects. Nevertheless, it has become apparent over the last 5 to 10 years that the reach of massive stars is even more profound than we had appreciated earlier. Observations from an armada of space facilities, along with deeper ground-based observations from the new generation of telescopes, have revealed the profound influence that concentrated injection of energy from stellar radiation, winds, and supernovae can have on present-day starburst galaxies. Influences that presumably replicate those that occurred in the galaxy population as whole billions of years ago. These feedback processes are now thought to be important for determining the present-day mass and luminosity functions of galaxies, for determining the structure of low-mass galaxies, and for enriching galaxies as well as the intergalactic medium and heavy elements. If you are an astronomer or an astronomy fan, I highly recommend reading this paper. You can find it in the description. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Are you in love with the stars? Did you like this video about the most massive ones? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.